And we have returned to go to Edgeworth, probably? I think so. So we have to go a very convoluted path to get to the underground parking lot. Yeah, I hate this stupid path. And uh, hi. To get to the High Prosecutor's Office. Yeah, here we go. February 23rd, High Prosecutor's Office. Room 1202. Oh no! Ah, oh, guests! My apologies! Oh, it's you. Have we met somewhere? Huh? Mr. Edgeworth, I beg your leave so long! Oh my god, he thinks you're Edgeworth. Is Edgeworth here? Yeah, standing by the window. A teacup in the sand. Oh, he is here. Okay, never mind. I don't see a teacup. Right. He has the hotel bring him tea service? Mr. Edgeworth, you're back from the district's prosecutor's office inquiry? I am. By the way, Detective Gumshoe was looking for you. Ah, yes. He brought me the latest information, it seems. Really? Was it helpful? Apparently a new French restaurant is opening near here. I think he was trying to console me somehow. Um, real info is on the other side, Edgeworth. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. I think this whole thing is really taking a toll on him. So, how did the inquiry committee go? Actually, they decided to treat this not as a case of concealing evidence, but as a communications error during the investigation. Concealing evidence? Yes, apparently there are some who believe that I concealed evidence. They gave me a warning. We were lucky this time. Again. Again? I've heard them say that so many times. Ever since that case two years ago. Are you okay for the trial tomorrow? Well, I'm still the presiding prosecuting attorney. However... Something happened? They gave control of the investigation over to the police... to the police department. The police department? Yes. Any further investigation for this case will be directed by the chief of police, Gant. I can do nothing but wait for his results. I... see. Why, I ask you? WHY?! All along, I have done only what I believe is right. I have nothing to be ashamed of. But still... Wow, I've never seen him this out of sorts. Hmm, we need to show him something. But what? Do I just literally just throw things at him? Might as well try. Right, please. I'm the prosecutor in this case. You don't expect to sit down here and discuss the case with you over a cup of tea? I'll pass on the tea. Just tell me about the case. Mr. Wright, Mr. Edgeworth just told you no in a very polite manner. Whose side are you on anyway? If I just show him my best evidence, I can get some reaction out of him. Okay, we need to find the best evidence. Is that the same? So is it the one where we have his uh, ID number then? Oh right! I better check this now. As I was saying, I... What's this? A record of ID card usage. Edgeworth, you went into the evidence room that day, didn't you? Just before the incident occurred, no less. Yes, that's true. Why, Mr. Edgeworth? Please don't look at me like that. I was asked to go by Chief Gant, no less. The Chief of Police? You wanted evidence for a case that wrapped up half a year ago. He told me he wanted me to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. But it was solved, right? It would have to be if it, the evidence was already filed. The chief has never wanted to explain himself. In any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought this back here. Can I ask what kind of case Can it ask, was? Oh. 
<laughs> I forgot. I didn't be paying attention. I can't say. It really has nothing to do with the current case. Now I'm curious about this other case. I'd better make a note of it. Evidence from a past case of Edgeworth brought back to his office by Gant's request. A screwdriver? Stubborn as always, I told you this has nothing to do with the current case. Hmm. I don't think there's anything else we can show him here. But it, it's something with that screwdriver, I imagine. Oh! Oh, hold on. Oh no. Shh. Let's try that again. Percent. I know you. You're probably gonna hold us some information already, right? It all has to do with that case you were on, the SL9 incident, and some dark suspicion you were wrapped up in. You were the man who revived the worst memory of my life. I'm sorry? I figured I'd be telling you about this sooner or later. He must be talking about his father's murder in that elevator. Okay, Edgeworth, why don't you tell me about it? Tell me the truth. Oh, so now we can talk to him, I imagine. Yes. The SL9 incident was a heinous serial killing case. The head of the investigations was the deputy chief, poli deputy chief of police at the time, Damon Gant. That wacky old coot was involved in the case two years ago too, then. He was a top officer, and it was the first time working with him. He was nervous. Oh, I was nervous. Wow, you got nervous too, Miss Edgeworth? What I want to know is why I was a deputy chief of police on the investigation. In truth, I use slightly more extreme methods than normal. We were dealing with a vicious murderer. If I let him go, the blood will be on my hands. We won our guilty verdict, and the killer was executed. Wait, you didn't. Of course not. I didn't touch the evidence. Yes, I will do anything in my power to win a trial. However, I do have a code, and I follow it faithfully. By the way, Emma, the chief prosecutor wanted to know something. My sister? What? If you were still studying forensic science? If you were still studying for it? Uh, yes, of course. Why? Just today, Mr. Wright and I were using this. My endless bottle of luminal testing fluid. Luminal testing fluid, hmm? Well, at least you know what it is, Edgeworth. Well then, you might have use for this. Aluminium powder for taking fingerprints? It's been chemically treated for better ad adhesion. For me? Are you sure? We are the enemy, you know? I'm not saying today's investigation. Do as you will. Oh, Edgeworth is playing smart here. Edgeworth, I'm really... No need to thank me. Here, take your powder and these fingerprint files for everyone involved. I, uh, thanks? How about giving these to Detective Gumshoe as well? No! Edgeworth... Fingerprint, fingerprint file. Edgeworth is playing, playing really smart here. <laughs> well, let's get going! One last investigation. Right. I do seem to remember seeing a suspicious handprint somewhere. I like what Edgeworth is doing here. Because he's... He's playing against Gant here, and he's doing it really smart, smartly too. By using us. That's actually really good. Well, no, look at that. He's not in there. February 23rd, evidence room, sector 3. Our investigation turned up a suspicious handprint. Here, in this plot of the detect. Here, in this plot on the detective's evidence locker. Let's use the secret weapon we just borrowed. Permanently. Aluminium powder. Right, let's get started. First, choose a finger. A finger. Each finger leaves behind a slightly different imprint. 
So let's choose the finger that will have left behind the clear sprint. I really can't tell the difference at a glance. Quit procrastinating and choose a finger. It will be the thumb? This is sideways, That's though. true. At least it looks sideways to me. This is not... Okay, now it's time to check for prints. Let me show you how it's done. I'm starting to get that sparkle in her, in her eyes. First, we sprinkle the aluminium powder around. Huh? How do you do that? We enter. See? Ah. It looks like that did the trick. The aluminium powder adheres completely to the print. Once the powder is well spread, just blow away the excess. Huh? How do I do that? With E. Exciting, I know. Okay, I don't actually have to blow. Obviously, because a computer doesn't have that. Imagine you're blowing out the candles on a birthday cake. See? Wow, that looks like fun. It might take some getting used to, though. But, for Phoenix Wright, for this one, they could have just, if you had a microphone active, they could have had, like, sound compensate for that. That's true. But I'm not sure how... That's what they did with the DS, I think. Yeah, with the DS. Because you blew into its microphone. Yeah, but the DS was also made to have that feature, so... It's fine. It won't go up your nose or anything. You just pour the powder on thick and blow away the extra. Those are the basics of fingerprint fingerprinting, Mr. Wright. I guess I'd better give it a try. Alright, she said thick. That is a lot of aluminium powder. Da, 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 da. And then blow it away? I think we have enough? Yeah. Aha! You did it! You found one! But, this looks nothing like a fingerprint. Hmm, now that you mentioned it, I guess it doesn't. What does it mean? The <laughs> rubber glove. What does it mean? The rubber glove. I think it means we had a luck. Out of luck? The person who the left person this ha oh. hamper must have worn gloves. Don't tell me we've been wasting our time here. Hey, calm down. That's just the way it goes sometimes with scientific investigations. But it does seem a shame. While we at it, why don't we look for other prints? Other prints? Looking at the locker door again closely. Ah, you see that uh, black shade? It seems like there are fingerprints outside the bloody handprint as well. Let's see if we can find a clear print. Hmm, fingerprints outside the blood. You can kind of see it. Right here. <laughs> no. Well, laid on thick, I guess. Oh, the clicking. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a fingerprint. I don't know. Uh, it didn't do all of it, I guess. I think it's at the bottom. There's some missing down there. There we go. Yay! It prints so clear it's dazzling! Uh, dazzling? Anyway, this print looks a, took a lot of effort to find. Let's match it up right away. So we're not done yet. This is quite a process. Well, there's no point in finding a fingerprint. And not knowing who the owner is, right? I guess she's right. Look at the fingerprints data from Mr. Edgeworth. And point out the person you think left those prints. Huh? How am I supposed to know who it was? I could make a pretty good guess. The bloody handprint and the fingerprints are in different places, right? That means that the prints probably don't have anything to do with our case. So whose fingerprints would we most likely find on this evidence log? Obviously. Gum yeah, yeah, Gumshoe. Intriguing! Aha! These prints belong to Detective Gumshoe! Something wrong, Mr. Wright? You gave me this, so what? Look. I guess that's probably because I was thinking, so what? 
Okay, so we came up with, fi with nothing this time. But as always next time, sometimes you hit, sometimes you miss. You gotta roll with the punches, Mr. Right? Thanks for the sympathy. Wait, if I remember correctly, there was one other handprint in this room. Let's check it out. Indeed there was. Right on that one. Oh, you, nice I think you, we might have to spray luminal fluid on it first. Ugh, of course we do. Hmm. Are we doing this wrong? We have to examine. This is where we got a luminal fluid reaction, right? Right. There was a handprint here. Okay. Want to try using this? There go her eyes sparkling again. Nah, yeah. eh, let's leave it be. Surely it's nothing. Let's check for prints. Yeah, let's check for prints. That's the spirit! Oh, but I have to warn you about something first. What? The area with the blood was swiped away, right? We only ended up finding it using chemical means. Any prints in that area will have been wiped away too. Oh, right. So that means no prints. Would you say the probability of your hypothesis is high? Uh, don't ask me! Anyway, we must try to find prints that, that weren't wiped away. Prints other than the ones left by the bloody handprint. Uh... Wait. <laughs> you could point to something next to the thing. So, they're showing two here that are not bloody. Yeah. Okay, this is fascinating. Oh! Oh shit, you need a lot. Now, who matches that? Well, I can't. Marshall? Oh yeah, that looks like Marshall! Hey, these fingerprints, they... Who's are they? Who's? Is this someone I know? It's... Officer Cowboy. Huh? Officer Jack Marshall? Marshall's fingerprints added to the court record. Found on a bloody handprint left in the evidence room. The print has been wiped. That's got to be a coincidence. He's not involved in the crime. Emma. This is decidedly different from Detective Gumshoe's prints. The luminal reaction. The blood and the fingerprints are on the same place. Oh. Oh! So we have Jake Marshall's fingerprints on a wiped blood stain. But why would Officer Marshall? It looks like our investigation is finally turning up some results. I guess this is what you'd call decisive evidence. I, I don't believe it's... Oh, okay. Huh. Do, do, do. Well, onwards we go, I suppose. No, no, we only have ten minutes. That's fine enough to get a see what the next thing is. Yeah, we can always leave him on a cliffhanger, I guess. Oh, it's back to the uh, courtroom. I like the courtroom. February 24th, 9.41am, District Court Defender Lobby Number 2. So, what do you think, Mr. Wright? I think the prosecution is as confused as we are. After all. The victim was murdered in two different places at the same time. And a different suspect was arrested at each of the crime scenes. Lana! 
Good morning, Mr. Wright. I apologize for yesterday. I was... indisposed. I hope they didn't hold you too long for questioning. We just finished, actually. I'm used to all-nighters, though. So, how did it go? It's as Mr. Wright suspects. The police are clueless. I figured as much, so I struck the plea bargain. A plea bargain? What do you mean by that? You agree that if I told them the truth behind this simultaneous murder, they wouldn't seek capital punishment. That's what I mean, Emma. But Lana! Don't tell me you... Much to my regret, I'm as much in the dark about this as they are. Miss Sky. Hmm? We found trace evidence of a certain person in the police department's evidence room. They belonged to Officer Jake Marshall. What kind of trace evidence? Oh, nothing much. Just bloody... Just a handprint next to some bloody hands. Yeah, that would be something. Whatever. <laughs> Blood-stained fingerprints, to be exact. That's the trump card I have up my sleeve today. You do understand what this means, don't you? In order to defend my sister, you're going to accuse Mr. Marshall? We have to play the cards we're dealt. Isn't that right, Miss Sky? Do what you have to do, Mr. Wright. February 24, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number 9. Oh boy. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Skye. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready. <clears throat> hmm? I'm afraid you will have to clarify. It takes 30 minutes by car to reach the police department from the prosecutor's office. Yet the victim Bruce Goodman was slain at both places at the same time. But that's not physically possible, is it? What's more, I hear the victim was from the evidence room just disappeared. Yes, and the body eventually reappeared in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. Wow, this is one messed up trial. One of my duties as prosecutor is to present impartial evidence. Today, I will present evidence related to the murder at the police department. In so doing, I believe the way in which we should proceed, proceed will reveal itself. Now what's... that's what Mr. Edward said Mr. Edward for part. He sounds so on top of things. Even though he doesn't know what's going on himself. And that's supposed to be an admirable trait? Actually, yes. Yeah, kind of. That's pretty useful. You gotta fake it till you make it. He <laughs> does it all the time. He's just less... He's more emotional. Very well, let the trial resume. On the day of the crime, what exactly transpired at the police department? Mr. Edgeworth, you may call your first witness to the of the to stand. For its first witness, the prosecution calls... The suspect of the murder that occurred at the police department. Oh no. The suspect? You mean the so-called murderer? Oh boy. Things are getting wild from the get-go. Hello, Meekins. Will the witness please state his name and occupation? Hmm. I have a feeling this Meekins part is going to take a while. And I don't like cutting in between, like, in the middle of their stuff. So I'd rather cut here, and then do the whole Meekins thing next episode. That's fine by me. So, see you next time where my ears die because Meekins is still a lot of stupid loudspeaker and thing. And it's going to be a long episode probably because of how these trials go.